Hello Space Fairies, this is a little story about life after uni. So, for those who don't know, I live in London, but I'm not from London, I'm originally a country mouse from the Garden of England, also known as Kent. So, how did I get here? Well, there are many ways to move from a small town to your nation's capital. Most are sensible and well-planned ways. Some, occasionally, are eh, fuck it ways. So, uh... Guess which mine was? This story actually begins way back in 2005 when I was still in secondary school. London had just won the bid to host the 2012 Olympics. It seemed impossibly far away and I just despaired of the thought that when 2012 rolled around I would have graduated uni and should be well on my way to starting my acting or arting career. To this day I remember turning to a friend and telling her that by the time the Olympics came to town I wanted to be in London. I won't lie, after uni was hard. I didn't get the job right out of studying that various career counsellors had promised I would, and nothing I had completed on my course counted towards the minimum two years experience that most employers were looking for. Plus there's this really awesome vicious circle some of you may have encountered where you need to live in London to get a job in London, but first you need to get a job in London in order to live in London. August 2011. I finished uni and moved home. September 2011. I was on job seekers benefits and looking for any random employment in my family's hometown in Kent, whilst simultaneously sending incredibly optimistic CVs to the BBC or talent agencies. November 2011. I had met my careers counsellor Barbara, who got me seasonal work as a Christmas elf in a local mall. So for six weeks, 11 hours a day, six days a week, I was mistletoe, one of Santa's helpers and bringer of Christmas joy to all the children of Tunbridge Wells. It was about seven or eight pounds an hour because I was, and I quote, the most senior elf, which got me extra responsibilities like managing the rotor and talking fellow elf Snowdrop through his very bad hangover. During this time, many of my friends were either beginning their final year of uni, moving to London themselves, or in some cases, planning their wedding. Meanwhile, back in comfy old Tunbridge Wells, I was planning Santa's next toilet break. So, still living with my parents and with very little social life to speak of, that seven slash eight pounds an hour turned into the closest thing I've ever had to savings and I was starting to have something which might actually get me a deposit for a shared flat in Zone 6 of London. You know, not great, but a start. Early December 2011. I have three weeks left as mistletoe before a dead end and a reluctant return to the job centre. My one day of a week was usually being spent travelling to Wimbledon to visit Tom, and this is a routine that was a bit of a culture shock given that only five months prior we'd been living in the same house. But the only thing I could think of was that as my friends were moving on I was sweeping up polystyrene snow and trying not to talk to them at length about the only thing going on in my life which was Christmas itself. Mid-December 2011. I've been looking for apartments in London. If I can afford it it means it's either very small, very far from the city centre or shared with a minimum of five people. One week I actually used my only day off to view a couple of the places that I'd found on offer. One had exposed wires in the bathroom and no lock on the front door. The other other was a spare room in the house of a man who asked me to call him Uncle Pete. For both of these places, the minimum deposit was £1,200. Hmm. Two nights later, an old friend from secondary school calls me. She lives in London, but one of her flatmates is moving out. Now, I'd visited this flat once before, and I just remembered that it had black mould in the bathroom, damp in the kitchen, a leak in the living room, and the building block was slightly sinking on the west side. But it was also ten minutes from central London. I now have less than three weeks left in my job. I have no plans, no new job afterwards, no transferable skills, and very soon no income. And that's where I said, eh, fuck it. Christmas Eve 2011. It's my last day as mistletoe, and I transfer every single penny I've earned over the past six weeks into my new landlord's bank account. Financially, I'm back to square one, but in every other respect, at least I'm on a different board. Boxing Day 2011. We've celebrated Christmas and I do not miss a beat. That's the day I moved to London. I feel like I skipped so many steps, even though at the time it felt longer, I actually made the jump from uni to London life pretty quickly. But I made that jump with absolutely zero logic or forward planning, I just did what was in my heart, and I won't lie, I definitely paid for it later on. Which is a story for another time. But, summer 2012, seven years after the bid, I sat in my flat in London as the Olympics came to town.